Shall we? Yes, let's do it. Attention. The movie guys love movies. Any comments made about the one black man who's actually happy that there's a 24-hour news cycle about the riots in Ferguson are purely for entertainment purposes only. Isn't that right, Bill Cosby? <laughs> I want to say Angie Dickinson, but it's not. Who is it that's piping off about him? Janice Dickinson? Janice, Janice. Dickinson. <laughs> is, is, I wish it were Angie Dickinson. <laughs> so does Bill. But does <laughs> anyone believe her yes. at all? Yes. Yeah, she, actually, yeah, there, I is, actually there, do. Is, there is precedence. She's I would mentioned actually, it before. Okay. Yeah. She's mentioned it before be, when she was coming out with a book back in the early 90s, I mm-hmm. think. She was on the Howard Stern show. And Howard said, hey, is there anybody you didn't put in this book? And she said... Matter of fact, there is somebody, and I didn't put it in because my publishers told me not to. It would be too dangerous. So I can't put it in, but it's some really well-known man. And it was Bill. Yeah. Because whenever Janice uh-huh. Dickinson. Yeah. Yes. Whenever she comes out, Superma- I just, How do you not know the names of supermodels? I know. You I, of all people You would the think show. you'd have one of those giant like things for football players. <laughs> oh, what is that thing called? The big head? The fat, fat head. A fat, fat head, head of, of supermodels in your apartment. Like I in her prime, Janice Dickinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When Let's Cosby not. was... Yeah. But I just have to think that if she's coming out, then it, all credibility goes away, right? She, well, no, she's because... She's a bit of a loon, true. She, right? yeah. She's ec- eccentric in that regard, but there's... um. As a thread of consistency between the message that all these women have. Her message of mm-hmm. getting drugged and passing out and kind of waking up with him on top of her is the same as the 15, or 15, the 17, 18 year old in some like um, college in Idaho who just happened yeah. to meet him once getting drugged and waking okay. up. So. Now there's like a Playboy Mansion story or something like that. Too, oh, right? I don't know about that one. I think it's all, I mean, I give who up. is it this week? I give up. If Bill Cosby's a shit, then oh. there's no hope for the human race. I know. Who's going to eat Jello anymore? Uh, he had an album called To My Brother Russell, whom I've slept with. Yeah. And now I'm wondering if it was against <laughs> his will. <laughs> Sing! <laughs> all right. Why is, why is there air under this pillowcase? Cosby's dying for single entendre <laughs> comedy at this point. <laughs> hey, welcome to the movie oh, showcast, hello. everybody. Part of the vast and sprawling movie guy's empire. I have just met you, and I love you. You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy. We bring the two together right here on our show every week with jokes, rants, sketches, characters, bits, special guests, and more as we broadcast from the Admirals Club in the heart of Burbank Airport's flyover zone. They don't stop making movies, so we don't stop making comedy shows about movies, which means you can get a new show from us every week. Basically, search Google, Yahoo, or... Bing! Bing! And we come right up. That's iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher... And of course, the themovieguys.net, absolutely free. And we encourage you to subscribe where you can, especially on iTunes. And if you do, still, no, How much? Ch- no charge. Okay. No charge. Mm-hmm. Turns out we're also on Player FM. Who knew? Player. Player. It's, dot player. FM. it's a it's a place that like, calls a bunch of podcasts together, and you can go and find oh. our stuff. I love when I don't do anything, and then there we are on a, on, a, on a website. You find all our shows. And it's not a website that has us up in some sort of, like, we've cr- created a crime. There's no... Um, it's yeah, not- we're not on a Parents Beware <laughs> yes. website. It's an actual an podcast actual podcast hub. Podcast hub. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You can find the showcasts like the one you're listening to also on a couple of internet radio stations, including JonasMountRadio.com, Thursdays at 6 Eastern, and WBAD.net, the D.C. area's largest internet radio station. Fastest growing. Fastest growing, largest. Uh, that's Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. here on the West Coast. Please tell your friends, share and like posts and videos and all that stuff, at the Movie Guys on Twitter and on Instagram. I am your host for the hardest working podcast on the airwaves. Paul Preston here with Lee Caius and Karen Volpe. Hello. Later on, the sh- Karen's just realizing oh, her, her the Karen special, special light, well, is not yeah. Lee noticed it because Lee, I think, is just as Well, because I s- actually the... sit kind of in the special light <laughs> normally. Here's the thing, though. You're going to turn the special light on now. Things are going to get way better. But we, uh, yeah, I thought you were beautiful even without it. Thank you, Aww. Because that's oh, you meant you. Her. All sure. right. <clears throat> Uh, oh, what no. are we talking about this week? Uh, we've the got oh, our guests. My, what? Okay, Very guys, entertaining sorry. duo who hosts the Hollywood Close Up podcast. Natalie Lipka and Wayne Frazier Yay! will be here later. <laughs> well, we'll applaud now. Uh, and Wayne's going to be happy I turned that special light up. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Stick with us. We've got Karen's All birthdays right. and a rousing round of What Did You See This Week right around the corner, as well as a focus group. We'll be finding out Shut what up. test oh, audience is. We went to a screening here in LA recently, uh, I think. I think it's important to find out what's on the mind of the viewers. Oh, uh, is it, Paul? It is. But first, <laughs> our signature movie previews, <laughs> prepping you for the upcoming week at the Cineplex. If you've been cooped Ooh. up watching copious amounts of TV over the holiday weekend, then you probably haven't realized there are movies coming out this week <gasps> in the theaters, no less. First of all, we have Wild. That is weird, wild stuff. And The Pyramid. <laughs> 
All right, stop that. <laughs> oh, my God. All that makes me think of is the fact that you want us a trip to Barbados. Oh, I'll talk about that. Oh. If only that movie starred Dick Clark. Right. Or Donny Osmond. Oh, yes. Or, any of the or Michael, of that other guy who won you all that money. Mike Richards. Nice guy. Yeah. yeah. Mike Richards, not Michael not Richards. Not Michael Richards. Mike, Mike Richards. Mike. A, fine, a damn fine host of The Pyramid who I won. I'll tell you that later. We, we got all this, uh, and uh, with those two movies in the docket, this essentially means one thing. Congratulations to the Hunger Games, Mockingjay Part 1, and another weekend win at the box office. <laughs> but just for fun, let's listen to a clip from Wild. <sighs> oh my god. What? I like it so far. I'm sorry you have to walk a thousand miles just to... Finish that sentence. Why do I have to walk a thousand miles? Happy trail, Cheryl. I'm kind of digging on the music. Boom, 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 boom. Traveling boom, music. Boom, 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 yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, Karen and I saw that, so when we preview Ooh. it, and then, then when we're done with it, we'll tell you what we thought. All right. Yeah, but right, uh, right, it's right. one of those uh, weekends where, I don't know, uh, even three weekends into Hunger Games, they're all getting out of the way, and they're putting out the Pyramid, which, you know, <laughs> is a horror movie. Well, when you make a movie like that, at some point, you have to release it. Yeah. Well, it's true. I had no idea that these movies were coming out, and I did watch copious amounts of television. Are there are there any ads for these movies out there? The Wild, yes. Yeah. The Wild yeah. is a limited release, so you may not have heard much yet. Okay. Wild you know, but then is... Oscar buzz will start exactly. forming, and it's one of those slow releases. It's also a movie that's not for the general audience. I think it's a movie that's for um, people who are a little more savvy about the movie-going experience. Mm-hmm. You know? Yes. You know, I'm just saying. And, you know, it's Oscar bait. Speaking of savvy so. moviegoers, check out Karen's shirt. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, check yeah. that out. It says Please Rotoflix. See? Rotoflix.com are good fl- uh, good friends. It's R-O-T-O-F-L-I-X if you're listening and not watching the show. But uh, you'd be watching because I just stuck <coughs> my boobs up towards the camera. There you go. Boobies. And now with a special light on them and everything. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, it was the booby light. It's the booby light. We had to get that on. Rotoflix.com is like fantasy football for movies. You go on there now. Now is the time to go on, yeah. everybody, and join and start a league, something like that, with all your friends. You can have up to eight different teams. And you can pick the movies you think are going to win awards and there'll be four major awards and their nominations that you have to predict will win so you pick, you draft movies you think are going to win and then you start them mm-hmm. every time the nominations come out and you start them when they pick the winners for four different big time awards it's sag critics choice golden globes and the oscars so right. it's not a huge time commitment but it's enough time where you can you know smack talk i gotta tell you that the thing i learned last year when i was doing rotoflix is you uh even though you love bill murray if it doesn't look like he's going to have a movie that opens with lots of box office, it's not bad. Or, be- or at all. You he didn't him? even have a movie coming out. I was like, Bill Murray. You picked him in the summer league, and yeah. I think he had nothing. But that out. doesn't help you, no. even if you love no. Bill Murray. Just putting that out there. Now, you people all back off because he's no- got a movie and he could be nominated. So if you pick Bill what Murray, movie? I will punch you oh, the, in the. Say, yeah. what Melissa, movie? Melissa McCarthy movie? Yeah. Okay. Who are St. Vincent. Anyway, if you pick that, just so to, you're saying, I picked, I picked um, your boyfriend just to bug you, Tom Cruise. Yes. So no matter how charming the actor, you don't get points for that. No, <clears throat> there are no charm. No points. matter how charming, skilled, affable, or Tom Cruise, yes, or Tom Cruise, they are. Mm-hmm. Not really. well, it's awards and awards only. There should yeah. be a category just for Tom Cruise. Rotoflix.com. <laughs> so check that out. The good thing is you can <clears throat> name your. I I have my team is um, Spirits to, uh, Tobin Spirit Guide, and then I'm the commissioner, Bill Murray. Let's talk about that. Because okay. called No Time to Argue. Because I, I got mixed up on my name versus owner, right? Because on Rotoflix, you're the owner of the team, mm-hmm. and you pick a name for that, and then you name your team. And I wanted to name my team A Few Good Men mm-hmm. with the owner being Tom Cruise, but yeah. I did it backwards. So Tom Cruise owned A Few Good Men. <laughs> well. No, the, yeah. No, yeah. it was the no, other A Few way. Good Men owned Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Yeah. Tom Cruise was yeah. your team. You know what? That's I a be- great team with <laughs> Tom Cruise. <laughs> I believe a few good men do own yeah, Tom that's Cruise. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. Which, nothing wrong with that. They're called Scientology. There you that's go. That's what they're that, called. That's who I was referring to. You're that's the late. minority I was talking about. His best shot at Oscar, Jerry Maguire. So you're a little late on that. Um, probably. Yeah. And he was he nominated? He was. He was nominated. Yeah. See, every time people get down on Tom Cruise, go back and watch Rain Man. Mm-hmm. And then if you ever get down on, well, Leonardo did... did did help himself out with Departed, but before Departed came out, if you ever got down on Leonardo, go back and watch What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, then, but the, he's laid out quite a... a Will Smith, a, uh, Six Degrees of Separation. I could go on. 
Will's pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness oh, was no. fierce. What? No. Oh, All right, let's scrub. Oh. Before we argue, let's we're, get on to we're our not movies. even. We haven't even flipped a page yet. As I mentioned, our we're first arguing. film uh, comes out in limited release this weekend. Reese Witherspoon transitions from the girl next door to that girl next door who liked the camp and didn't shower much <laughs> in the yeah. hot way. Oh, <laughs> Lee, let's talk about Wild. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> Now, if you've ever wanted to see Reese Witherspoon as a drugged-out, filthy tramp... Paul, that's how I see her every time I close my eyes. Well, then you're in luck, because this movie is for you. Let's play a clip. Do you know my name, sir? Don't need to know. You don't need to know my name? Not quite yet. I'll get oh, that really? information. Okay. You're about to find out who I am. That's fine. I'm not real worried about you, ma'am. I done told you how things work. I forgot she did that. We forgot. She, we all, we've all forgot she oh got it, right? Oh, my God. Totally got... What did she get busted for? drunk driving and she was all nasty and sassy well her husband was getting arrested and then she stepped in to solve the problem and that's what it sounded like <gasps> oh well paul the oh, movie dear. based on a book presents the true story <laughs> you been greenlit of cheryl strayed <laughs> a recently divorced woman who dealt with the death of her mother and drug addiction by hiking the pacific crest trail from the mojave desert to seattle only to find that the nirvana concert had been canceled oh the film follows mostly Witherspoon on this adventure, much the way Castaway followed Tom Hanks or 127 Hours followed James Franco. Mm. This is what Hollywood is calling a getting back to nature film, or what background actors call boycott this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Jean-Marc Vallée, director of Dallas Buyers Club, who trades in uglying up guys for uglying up girls. He hates these cans! Uh, according to the director, awesome. according to the director, she went uh, method with the hair and no makeup. Oh, the, Lee, the Lee Strasberg Institute was unavailable for comment, mm -hmm. as was the L'Oreal Actors Conservatory president Carol Channing. <laughs> <laughs> now we're guessing that no makeup is the new gaining five pounds for a role. But truth be told, though, in looking closely at this trailer, you'll notice that Reese isn't quite going without makeup. <clears throat> Rather, she's wearing the kind of makeup that makes it look like you look really good without makeup. Either way, brave choice, Reese. Brave choice. Lee, you know a lot about makeup. Lots of... The best kind looks like no makeup at all. Just like yours. White Trash, the movie, sees Cheryl Strayed played by Reese Witherspoon, setting out on an 1,100-mile hike along the Pacific Crest Trail in a literal and metaphorical journey to find herself. Wait, hold on a second, movie. Did you just name your lead character Cheryl Strayed, the one who is lost in life and decides to go and find herself by hiking the wilderness? Well done, movie. Well done. Now, this is a movie about hope and inspiration and about how you can accomplish anything you put your mind to. Oh. Well... Do we get to see Reese Witherspoon topless? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well done, movie. Well done. Right, this looks like a cross between this woman's personal journey and Disney nature's bears. Look, all I know is if I'm ever going on a journey to find myself, I'm going to Tahiti or Hawaii. But that brings up an interesting point. We could explore another round of... Premise solved in 10 seconds! Cheryl, goodbye. Hold on. I'm going to walk a thousand miles because you're dumping me? Uh, yeah. No. You go walk a thousand miles. Also, piss off. I'm going to Cabo. That's how you end the movie. Da, da, da. Okay, I mentioned that we'd seen this movie. We did. And I got to tell you, it's fantastic. Is it? Excellent. Yeah, it's really good. I got to tell you. I got to tell you, without telling you anything, it's going to be hard. Her name is Cheryl Strayed, by the way. She changed it. Yes, when she got her divorce. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. I did a little of the research, and I realized that that actually happened. But it's it's yeah, not a big spoiler. To, it's to not. Yeah, that's that. something that's. But this uh, movie, there's a lot of those movies out there that show like people going on some personal journey of discovery. Uh, Eat, pray, love, right? Or mm -hmm. the bucket list, or uh, under the Tuscan sun, and of course into the wild, where a guy just goes in the woods and dies. <laughs> not my movie. That is not this movie. Yes. You know, <laughs> sorry, told you the end, but uh, that's what happens. The thing about this movie is that um, she's dealing with the loss of her mother, and I have had my mother pass away a couple of years ago, and so I knew what that felt like, and it's often interesting when you find a movie that can capture what you felt like, and it's really amazing. It's To give it an equivalent would be, to someone to have someone go and do a movie about what it was like growing up in your hometown and they nail it 
And you're yeah. like, holy shit, they nailed that. That's my memory. No, they nail what it feels like to they lose actually, your mother. They actually did a move. Well, first of all, mm-hmm. let's just bring it down one more notch. All very right, very yes. seriously, I need to know, do we get to see her topless? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Mm-hmm. All right. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Yes. See, this, here's the interesting things about this movie. First of yep. all, the director made Dallas Buyers Club. I think this is a one-up on that. And I know that was uh, his yeah. revered movie, but I think this is more engaging, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the first of these movies. The other ones I mentioned, Eat, Pray, Love, and whatever, they, they kind of skirt the surface a lot into the wild maybe it was a little deeper but a lot of them just skirt the surface this is the first one that really laid out what this person is feeling and and why mm-hmm. they have to do this i still don't get why chris mccandless went up into the woods and died i don't get it that movie tried to make me get it didn't wait you see the young guy that died in the bus yeah mm-hmm. well he died because he couldn't get out he he stayed too long ate some bad berries End of game. <laughs> Why did he go? I mean, have a oh, plan. Some... She's walking across a, a oh, thing. There's at least stops along the way where you gotcha. don't die. Gotcha. He went up and he went to a place where he could die. And guess what? You died. <laughs> Not my thing. But this movie lays out the real personal journey excellently. Um, takes itself very seriously when it has to. Has fun when it has to. And it's a great lead performance. Yeah. She's fantastic. And they found a way to have a woman walking alone have lots of interaction with other people by callbacks and... Um, by actually running into people, but by a memories. But shithead men. Yeah. A movie does a great job of showing you what asshole oh. guys are. And we have totally ruined it. they come across it. a woman <laughs> in the woods and just like, they, what, how can I screw with her? And when he says screw with you, he means how can I try to put my penis in you? Yeah. And it's, what I thought was interesting from a woman's point of view, and Natalie, you're probably going to relate to this. Women, when we do th- things during the day, we at if we're alone and we think, hey, I hope I don't have someone try to have sex with me. Like if you're going to the store and a guy kind of follows you to your car, you think, oh my God, there's I'm in a, danger. A for that. Someone might want to rape me. Yeah, there you go. I hope he doesn't but, try to have sex with me. You mean but, rape me? And I don't mean it in a like, hey, he thinks I'm hot way, but I mean it in a we're always having to be protective of I might be violated yeah, by a man. That's horrible. And men never have that. Or if they do, it really freaks them out because they're like, this is the weirdest feeling ever. <laughs> but this movie really uh, hits home on that because in a lot of movies, they have the guy who's quintessential asshole and the woman feels uncomfortable. In this movie, walking alone, every man she meets is a potential threat, which is real. And when men like my husband watched it with me, he turned to me and he's like, is that what it's like? And I'm like, yeah. it's really scary to be a woman alone. I want someone who's doing you a favor. You got to double gotta... check him and go, this guy wants something now yeah. that he's just do helping me. And you're not trying to be paranoid. You're just trying not to get raped. It's like the walking dead. Yeah. Everyone you meet, count on them being an asshole and just kill them right away. <laughs> Don't even. You know, what? the funny thing about the movie is she does meet one guy who is normal to her. And it's refreshing, isn't it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> you go. But I can sympathize. But still, you don't buy it right away. Not right away. Yeah. But when you figure it out that he's not out to do anything, you go, I like him. I yeah. can sympathize, though, Karen. Because you're always getting raped? No, because I went <laughs> jogging without my shirt on in West Hollywood once. <laughs> and I got to be honest with you, I, I didn't get 20 feet without like 20 cat calls. And I'm like, I'm going to go and put a shirt on. Are you kidding? No. It's weird, right? I'm like, this is what women have to yeah. put up with? And oh, it doesn't please. even. <laughs> You're an ass. What? That's true. And, it, and it's sure. not even like... I as feel a, for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Anyway. Tugging the heartstrings, Sarah oh, well. I it's, tried. It's not even It's not even like she was That's trying that to... That's that know-what-I'm-getting-into situation I was telling you about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a good movie, and they capture um, the reality a of a lot That's of different gonna things. That's going to be on my one of the best of the year. Yeah. And she did get pulled over for drunk driving, so... That's amazing. That clip is amazing. Can we amazing. talk about Matthew Broderick without you talking about how he killed a guy? Kill the guy in Ireland, drunk driving. <laughs> Did you know that? Did you know that? Killed a no. guy. No. Vehicular homicide. I don't know if they call it that over there, but yeah. Deado. Killed a guy. Holy killed a guy. Cow. I'll name the celebrity. Lee will bring up the <laughs> shortcomings. That's kind of how the show goes, right? <laughs> Bill Murray. I know. He beat his wife. Just saying. What? Yeah. Yeah, he hit her, knocked her around a little bit. Stop this. I know. Our next film is apparently opening this weekend, although you wouldn't know it. I've seen nothing, no ads, no trailers, no no, uh, nothing. But supposedly this weekend sees the release of The Pyramid. Karen? Ooh, I hope it tells the story of one of the world's most favorite shapes. (laughs) Honey, I added the word most. Most favorite. Most favorite. Maybe isn't it scary when things jump out at you from around corners or dark, narrow hallways? Well, here's a movie that takes place in a setting that is nothing but corners (laughs) and dark, narrow hallways. This is a terrifying story of a group of young explorers as captured by the GoPro cameras attached to their heads. Yes, it's Blair Witch Goes Underground. 
This movie is entirely lit by headlamps. Not since Chud has a movie sunk to such depths. Oh. Well, well ho hold on, guys. I, I think you're actually doing all the preview material and jokes that we did for As Above, So Below, which came out last September. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, I think so. Damn, I think you're right. Yeah, okay. Seemed to fit, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was right, appropriate. Let's, let's start over. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> a group of adventurous explorers finds themselves trapped underground right. as an unknown force hunts them down one by one as they travel further below ground. Okay, now, Paul, Paul now, now you're just talking about the descent. D Lee, you're right. Yes. Oh. But this time it is also the pyramid. Oh, well, in that case, continue. I swear we just saw this. All right, let's focus on what sets this film apart. It's very noisy, screamy. Here, take a listen. That's the very definition of noisy screamy. That's unedited. <laughs> All those screams in a horror movie can only mean one thing. Yep. Bwong oh. is on strike. Um. Sorry, kids. No Bwong for the holidays. You remember Bwong from the favorite. summer, right? Yeah. Don't get him. Yeah. In the pyramid, a group of non-Nazi hunting archaeologists discover a brand new pyramid in Egypt. But while they're smart enough to look for pyramids in Egypt, they're also dumb enough to go inside of it. Things get creepy when the group that has never seen a movie about mummies mm -hmm. goes inside the place where they store dead Egyptians. Don't go in there, the movie. It's about a group of American archaeologists who discover an ancient pyramid, and upon opening the long-sealed tomb, they are immediately sprayed with a deadly gas, killing one of their teammates. So, what do they do? They go in there! And then the rest of the movie happens. Now, as far as that team member who gets killed at the beginning of the movie goes, don't worry. What? He was the obligatory red shirt character right. who in this movie was the local Egyptian hired to shovel sand and be tricked into opening the door to a tomb that will end up spraying deadly gas into his face and killing him. Mm -hmm. This movie knows where its bread is buttered. They wouldn't be so stupid as to kill off one of its big stars like James Buckley or Krista Nicola. I'm surprised you had to use a sound effect for that. You usually got your guy in here making noise anyway. <laughs> Will they find out why there's a pyramid with an eyeball in it on American currency and why we don't find that weird and are easily convinced that there's some crazy cult behind everything? Probably not. But seriously, why is that? I don't know. Special note before you go see the pyramid, Reese Witherspoon is not naked in it. There you go. Yeah. I'm out. Could have led with that and been done after that. <laughs> right? yeah. Wasted my time with that preview. <laughs> um, uh, maybe I just didn't do my homework, but did I ever see a preview for this? Never. I was about to say, <laughs> there is no way I knew this movie was coming out unless right? Paul told me. I think me. it's going to be like 1,500 screens or something, but I just don't know. And, and can it come out in December? Aren't we still all kind of warm, fuzzy? Is it The Pyramid or Pyramid? The Pyramid. The Pyramid. The pyramid. We're kind of like, oh, we're we, oh yeah, penguins of Madagascar. We're you know Turkey, and now into the woods. The pyramid. Oh. <laughs> this sm this smells Not of ready. the producers, right? This smells of somebody who doesn't want to make money on their. Movie. Oh my god, I thought you meant the movie, the producers, <laughs> yeah. which is awesome. I'm no, like, no, this, no. Is like, we do. this is a scheme not to make money yeah. on this movie. That's why they uh, have those actors that Paul mentioned. James well, there is a Buckley. lead actress in here who's in Agent Carter. She's the lead of Agent Carter. So I guess there's some. Is it a TV oh, show? that's good. A TV show. Uh, you know, I don't think It's a that comic book. Well, Adam's not here. It's a comic book to show. TV show. The idea that the guy that is in charge, their Sherpa there, opens up the pyramid. Why would he do that? He knows not to do that. Why would any of them do it? You get an <laughs> army, right? Get the army and come over and open it up while yeah. the army's there. Yeah. You don't just go, well, let me check this out. You know what you do? Oh! You get the TV yeah. cameras yeah. there like they did with, um, what's his face? And you open two of them kind of... Al Capone's tomb. vault. And yeah, it's it Her and Geraldo yeah, Rivera. Yeah. Open so this. if he gets trashed by it's deadly Geraldo gas, Rivera. no loss. Hey, he's out there looking for Os or Obama or Osama. What's Osama the, bin Laden. Obama. Is. But Obama. I think they put him in the water, didn't they? They put him. In, they put Osama oh, he, in the water. Is he out there looking for the corpse? No, no. But oh. remember when he was in Afghanistan? He said he had a, he had a firearm on him. And if I see Osama, I'm gonna. He said this. I'm gonna <laughs> shoot remember him. That. I'm gonna shoot him. Well, not Obama. He's not gonna shoot him. He's amazing. Who did he kill or assault or what's wrong with him? Oh, he he uh, he. Well, he cheated on his wife Cece, but he got in that fight. He got in that fight on TV. Remember that? Yo, yeah, yeah, the yeah. skinhead fight. And his real name is Gary White. 
Seriously, I, I'm not and, making that. And Lee has a Geraldo problem with Geraldo Rivera that. decides that it's a, a better ploy. His we'll name's a, Gary White. We'll have to well, do disparaging facts about celebrities <laughs> separate podcast one day, right? Just shout them out. No preparation. And, just, and you tell me tell what us. you know, what you're storing up there. <laughs> That's nefarious I about just, these various people. I just am so disappointed in the human race. And Bill Cosby's just the most recent example. Because there is no, you can't have faith in anybody now. Bill oh, Cosby? I have something to report. I saw it on Facebook. Uh, Must be true. It's a video, <laughs> and it's clipped oh, off of someone's phone. So I saw it on the news, facebook.com. But you will like it. It's our boy, Cool Breeze Reeves. Oh, okay. All right. So it's just like a little video, and there's no, it's just really someone on their phone. So it's just, all of a sudden, you see a train, um, like in New York City, and you just see her kind of sneaking a video of Keanu Reeves just sitting opposite her in the train by where the door is open in that single seat by the little pole. Not taking a town car, not taking no. a limo. Because Cool Breeze cool is on the subway. Of course nice. he is. And you just For the him. record, Keanu means Cool Breeze in Hawaii. Yeah. In Hawaii. So, and one of our favorites. Did you not know this? <laughs> no, now they do. He's only We're big awesome. fans now. Uh, so Cool Breeze just kind of hanging out. He's just sitting there and wiggling, you know, because his train's moving and the lady's taking the video and uh, they stop at a stop. It gets busier. A bunch of people come on. He doesn't even think twice about it. He looks up. He sees a girl about 25, tired looking, standing there holding the thing and he just kind of taps her and he's like, you want my seat? And she laughs because it's Keanu Reeves and he gets up and she sits down and she's like, oh my God, that's so awesome. And then he just took her spot and kept standing. Karen, can I say this? Yes. Faith renewed. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. That's what are, I was are hoping. You back? I'm back Good. with humanity. Go humanity. And you can't tell us anything is wrong with him, can you? Like he said, I know nothing. Like no. He, he, no. He, what did he do for his sister? He's, uh, uh, she had a disease. She eventually died from it because they had no cure. Bone marrow. Bone marrow. It's He'd... something, and he put an entire wing on Cedar Sinai, oh, right. yeah. trying to fix it. And so they're still helping other people in her name. We love him. He's yeah. my new and I, John Wick. And I, 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 I've not seen that yet. <laughs> and it's about him helping to validate the death of a puppy. I know. <sighs> He's like the man. Right? I know. Oh, cool listen. Breeze. Here's listen, Let me play the beginning of the Pyramid trailer to remind you of the movie we should be talking no, about. No, not again. <laughs> uh, listen to this. It has been called the curse of the pharaohs. Vengeance against adventurers who disturb. This is like 30 seconds of real life facts before they tell you what the movie is yes, about. Yes, and the real life facts are all about how you're going to die if you go into this tomb. <laughs> so all the all they need to do is watch the trailer of the movie. And it just makes me want to watch a documentary about all this. Oh yeah. Hang on. Who are the people that go in? A bunch of 20 somethings. Yes, and Dennis O'Hare. Who's Dennis O'Hare? The biggest name in the movie. Oh, uh, I have no problem with a bunch of like hipster 20 something doofuses going into a Getting pyramid. Creamed? Yeah, yeah I'm for out. watching that. <laughs> The I world mean, could use a few less mustaches and uh, paper boy hats. I'd be like, all right, let's watch Keep shoving that. them in. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyways, you mentioned I will see Pyramid because I want Hey, guys, there's an IPA bar down yeah. there. What? <laughs> you know, and they go in there scratching on their yeah. mustaches. Here I come. Free vests. Oh, hey, guys, free vests I, in there. I love flannel. Folk music night. <laughs> oh, what? There's ukuleles. What? Ukuleles. <laughs> There's a flat-chested girl playing a ukulele. Hey, get in there. Flat-chested girl. Let's go down and see what... Uh, let's. Uh, there is one more movie coming out this Uh-oh. week, no. but then we saw that it starred Nicolas Cage, which oh. automatically means it's a limited or multi-platform release that no one will go and see, mm. even if it's not totally bad, because Nicolas Cage is good career move proof. <laughs> Cage has slid so far that we decided to revisit some of his films from the last decade and run some of them past a test audience to see what they thought. I told you we had a sure. test audience here, and we do. We have uh, Stephen and Judy with us. How are you today? Good, Good fine, fine etc. Et okay. They will hear the description of the Nicolas Cage movie and then hit their buzzer, their mothers, hit their buzzers, <laughs> <laughs> etc. Good. <laughs> you know, you know what a, a Freudian slip is. It's when you <laughs> say one thing but you mean your mother. <laughs> All right, so they will hear the description of the Nicolas Cage penis. Movie, movie, I said movie. Right. They will hear the description of the Nicolas Cage movie and hit their buzzers if and when the movie no longer appeals to them. Okay, you understand? The premise is very important. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead and test your buzzers now. Steven? Excellent. And uh, Judy? Excellent. Now, as I said, uh, the film we're talking about today that opens in some theaters but mostly online is <laughs> Dying of the Light. As we all know, it's adapted from the Rodney Dangerfield hit Back to school. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. We're just messing with you. We, we, we have fun here, right? <laughs> we do. Uh, dying of the Light is yes. actually a rather sober action drama. And again, just buzz in when you think the film starts to be unappealing. Right. Okay, here we go. 
from the writer of Taxi Driver and the director of Cat People comes a film about a rogue CIA agent played by Nicolas Cage. Okay, okay, I see. Interests seem to die out. I'm going to write this down. Somewhere after CIA agent. So let's note that. <laughs> We're going to move on to an older movie. Okay. Let me know how you feel about The Sorcerer's Apprentice. This is from the director of Three Ninjas and The Mighty Ducks and stars Nicolas Cage. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to write that down too. Making some notes here. <clears throat> all right. Now, The Weatherman from director Gore Verbinski... <laughs> Who brought us Pirates of the Caribbean <clears throat> and the Lone Ranger? The Lone Ranger. Nothing. No. Okay. Fine. It features Michael Caine and Nicholas <laughs> Nicholas Holt from oh. X Men: First Class. Okay. Well, I, I need to take my buzz back then. Yeah. Um, me too. Please go on. He's good, right? All right. Yes. Oh, and it also features Nicholas Cage. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. All right. Well, none of these are testing well. We'll have to pick apart the numbers later and find out why. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> this next one is about a vengeful father who escapes from hell. What? What? Okay. Why are you buzzing now? It's Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it's, it's not Ghost Rider. Oh, okay. Oh, right. It's Drive Angry. Uh, okay, stop it. Stop. Okay, we're gonna go to break. We're gonna go to break. We'll be back in ten seconds. Yeehaw! Hillbilly Horror Show, the series Wicked Channel gives 9 out of 10 stars, is now on DVD. BestHorrorMovies.com says it's a lot of fun and I'm itching for more. It sure is. If you love horror films and want to see the lovely Lulu played by Rachel Faulkner featured in Maxim strutting around in her Daisy Dukes, pretty as a hog wallering in the mud, then Hillbilly Horror Show is for you. Grab your copy at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, or visit us on the web at HillbillyHorrorShow.com. Nine out of ten rating from uh, some other. Uh, we we need to get some ratings. Or something. I know it sounds pretty cool, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, they got they got rated and stuff. Did right? you say nine yeah. out of ten ratings or nine out of ten? They had a nine out of ten rating. Rating. So or we I know, may have said nine out of yeah, ten. Yeah, we don't ratings. know if it's a star <laughs> or a thumb. <laughs> yeah, nine out of. Yeah. Uh, but do check positive. out their show. We applaud folks doing comedy about the movies. And mm -hmm. They support indie filmmakers because they show these indie horror films, and then they do comedy hosting uh, to show them off. Um, so good on you. And we're back with our special guests who are going to be joining us for the remainder of the show. A couple of actors who, and I admire this, didn't just sit around and wait for work to come to them. They put together a podcast that's been around for years now, putting mm -hmm. themselves out there. It was previously under different names, but for the last year and a half, you can find it on iTunes as Hollywood Close Up, Natalie Lipka and Wayne Frazier. Yeah. 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 The obligatory Lovely. applause sound drop. I like thank that. you, thank you. I know it feels good, right? Thank you for Matt. having right. us. We have it uh, so that every time we come out here to the club, it does that. So it's kind of like on one of those motion sensors and there's applause. Yeah, when we walk in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try to set that up everywhere I go, but I've always managed here. So. Yeah, As so you deserve. It's, That's right. Yes. It's dead silence. Yeah. So <laughs> tell right. folks who are uninitiated about Hollywood Close-Up. Well, Natalie... <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. I got this. Okay. Every week, yeah. they interview a new Hollywood <laughs> Yeah, if you don't tell us what it's about, Lee and I are going to decide what it's about. Yeah. So Hollywood Close-Up has a lot of options. Lee. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, Lee, wait, wait. what's wrong with Natalie wait, and Wayne? Wait. What have they done in their lives? Although Who Lee, are these people? Lee has been gr is great, so I, 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 I would kind of like to hear what he thinks our show's about. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah I want to hear don't. that. No, you don't. <laughs> um, so basically, our show is about creating your own career in the entertainment industry. And we talk about on the show about entertainment news and social media and then basically just giving tips for people who are pursuing a career in the biz. And, Dare I say and it's not just about it's not just, you know, uh, we don't just have guests that are, you know, are big names or whatever. It's everybody. You know what I mean? That's what we, we want to keep it like. Oh, is really that why you included Paul once? So, <laughs> so I understand Paul now. Show, <laughs> Wayne, like, I told you not to say that. <laughs> Now I get it. But, but we interview working actors, directors, writers, producers, casting directors, you know, just to 
give out information to, like I said, yeah. people who are pursuing in the industry or, or already in it, or already in it, or want to know about the industry, and people that might want to move out or or, or 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 do in their own hometown of Butte, Montana, or wherever. <laughs> we have a lot of listeners in Butte. I I, I figured as much. <laughs> so do we. And that's, Perfect. It's funny. <laughs> it works out great, right, guys? <laughs> right? <laughs> Biggest ratings. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's basically you know we we just want everybody to go. Hey, you know you, you don't just listen to the show and go, oh, well, it's just for actors and writers and, and producers and that. No, it's it's kind of for everybody because we, we ask questions to our guests that are not just the norm. You know, most people go on their tour, their circuit of movies, and they and they, they have the same questions asked again and again and again. And we like to, you know, shake it up a little bit. We're not we're not Howard Sternish, but we're just like we want to give the the general audience an idea of what these, uh, you know, these different – uh, uh, concepts of how the show was created, how this was done, or how how you you got the idea to write this, and 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 how how you prepared to act in this particular and job. the makeup. Yeah, you we talk, yeah we talked to makeup artists. We talked to, you know you know from American Horror Story. We had uh, some people on from that, and and it's just I don't know. We, we just kind of want to keep it at a, a, a general consensus for everybody to go okay that's a little more inside than yeah like if you had that. jimmy schubert on the show right <laughs> yeah. Enter- entertaining as hell yes. but then you have bonnie gillespie on right who's going right. to be informative as hell so right. you, you kind of cover both those grounds right and exactly. then paul preston she's big uh, right. casting director for and those then paul preston. And, paul and then paul preston, preston. And then, yeah, i come out i don't know what you were on episode the movie, four guys. you realize that i do yeah. i look back and i saw it was uh the voiceover guy yeah uh what was bill, ratner. bill ratner bill ratner and me and like a couple other people kicking your show off so exactly and Bonnie Gillespie, Bonnie Gillespie, Bonnie Gillespie, Bill Ratner, you. That's right. And we're Everybody. still going. She, she was returning. And, and we're still going. I know. Every Paul, week. you didn't make it jump the shark, is what he's saying. I, ho- I hope not. <laughs> episode four, <laughs> Jesus, well, I hope not. You're on. It's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> might as well have a baby. All right, All right, what's going on? What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Since when am I an asshole? <laughs> Not on my own show. Oh, oh, technically right. speaking. Uh, <laughs> shut up, you. So if I, if I hear this correctly, yes. it's, it's a thinking man's TMZ. That no, no. <laughs> no, never compare any show to TMZ, no. well, especially said, to the face of the the people on it. Entertainment news. So I was thinking, okay, maybe that's not entertainment news. Well, TMZ. No. She had mentioned it. No, they are entertainment news. I, we TMZ do talk about gossip. entertainment news. There you go. Yes. But we don't. But, I stand by my. Uh, hang on, guy hang, hang on, Lee. Miss you get Kelly. any entertainment news information out of TMZ? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, I, I, I do watch TMZ. Wow. Yeah. Not for news. No, not for news. But sometimes I'll see latest. something happening, and then I'll be like, I should look that up to find out. What's Where did going I on. get the Reese Witherspoon clip? Where did we find out Michael Jackson died? There Where did we find out that Ray Rice was beating his wife in an elevator? I call this news. But TMZ. that is not our show. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> but all those things, yes. <laughs> for TMZ. <laughs> not Hollywood close-up. Hollywood close-up. Who is Natalie the- and Wayne.com. Now, who's yes. the best interviewer out there? You mentioned Stern. I think he's the best interviewer oh, going. Gosh. I don't get that. I oh. honestly do not understand oh, my God. why he's regarded. Jimmy Fallon. Really? Really? I just love Jimmy yeah. Fallon. Yeah. I think he's I, great as far as the appreciation of the the people that he's interviewing. I like him you know? on the Tonight Show more than he did in his own the old show. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you there. I you I know I Jimmy always have to go with David Letterman if you're gonna go somewhere interview yeah. wise. Dave's always you know, he's always get something and he's always just get something different to talk about. So it kind of you know you know it's not just it's not just like hey what's coming out he's always got something there. And, I love that uh, guests like, feel inclined to bring something too. Yeah. Like Bruce Willis always got something. St- uh, Steve Martin's always got something. Yeah. And these guys aren't coming on with just hey talking points. Yeah, Bill right. Murray yeah. broke his head open on a trash can when he jumped into it. I remember that episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do. But I think Stern. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, especially on Sirius, I mean, the 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 talk is uncensored. It doesn't get horribly filthy necessarily, but you can talk about anything. Right, and you can go as long as you want to. You can go as long as you want to, and uh, he just demands the truth. And I think that's a great he thing out dig. of an interview. He interviewer. does dig, yeah. but he does it in a way that's not like you guys were talking earlier on the show, like some like Geraldo or whatever. It doesn't it doesn't become like right, this right. trashy, yeah. weird type of mm-hmm. you know? No offense, Geraldo, but uh, yeah. no offense, <laughs> you know, Dave, Geraldo what, you know, what is was his in name? Blue, what, what, Butte, Montana, what, watching the yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Barry White or something? Gary White. Gary White. Gary White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Gary. Um, but yeah, no. It seems that you know Dave seems to just uh, or, or you know or Howard. I mean, he, he just seems to he brings that out, but he's he, it's not 
not like it used to be. It's not this mean, you know, he's just not trying to dig on you, but he's getting these questions answered. Which I think might work to his advantage now because everyone's afraid of the old Howard. So when they come in, they feel like if I don't tell the truth or if I evade questions, he's going to attack me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're scared. Maybe that's why they're opening up. What do you guys make of Nicolas Cage? You were sitting here while we were bagging on him a little bit. Gosh, man. No, nah, I, uh, man, it just hasn't been anything. We it's were trying to so think of his great long. movies. You got to go back ten years. I mean, oh, the, I was the, the, Face the, Off. Face Off, <laughs> yeah, Face more off? Than ten years, oh, but a, a fun yeah. movie. Well, and the well, one he won the Academy Award for, the uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Leaving Las Vegas, like ninety six, right? Isn't yeah, it it just and it just it's so disappointing. But you know, I heard a story. Don't know if this is true or not, but I heard a story about Nicolas Cage that said that what he likes to do is he likes to. Make these movies, and he's a he's a spend like he spends money, like he just loves to spend money. Don't know if this is true or not, but he spends all his money on purpose so that he doesn't become this big Hollywood guru, and that's why he does these movies because he just gets a paycheck, and it just becomes this thing where where he doesn't want to be you know, this 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 guy that's loaded with all his cash and has all his money all the time. He wants to have to go out and work. So he wants to live hand to mouth like we are forced to live. <laughs> yeah. Go, you go. You enjoy yes, that. Yes. Enjoy yeah. that. That changes everything. True right? or not? True or not? You know what? Don't Maybe know. you should There's check with um, TMZ, on TMZ or that other show that's just like it, that Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood close up show. Yeah. <laughs> We've tainted Hollywood close up forever now. Thanks a lot, co host. Hey, you know what? If you Google TMZ and Hollywood close up comes up, I'm not going to be upset. Exactly. <laughs> right? I will not be upset. HCU, yeah. TMZ. It's cool. Harvey, yep. I mean, We'll talk. We're trying to piss off celebrities here, so they put out a press release about how much they hate us. A press release <laughs> that I have to pay for? Sweet. That's so funny. Yeah, who knows if that's true? I don't know. Who's Who your story? favorite guest on the show? On our show yeah, or you, on yeah. your show? Other than Paul Preston. I was going to say Paul Preston. Right. Paul Preston. Christ. Hello. Come on, Paul Preston. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We had, a, 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 if you don't mind, Natalie, we had a, an amazing <laughs> guest that I think was just, oh. just really floored. Our, our show and we got to talk to bob nelson last year and he wrote yeah. nebraska i heard that one that was cool. a great one and, and because was, i loved that movie yeah, that movie was so good just, uh, just uh, everything about that movie the cinematography black and white or not it didn't matter everything about that movie was just magical yeah, yeah. and to talk to him and him so gracious mm -hmm. and, and 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 just wonderful lovely person and the story about how he waited 10 years for the movie to be made how alexander payne was a part of the film and he waited that time and i mean that's the story of an actor he was working and doing sketch comedy and all that and to hear that story and where he is now i mean it was amazing yeah, yeah. It was, i mean to it, it seems like a film payne wrote mm -hmm. i mean it was a perfect combination of of director yeah. and writer because yeah. it just that fit his tone and feel yeah. perfectly and mm -hmm. then you throw in Bruce Dern who you know amazing actor has been around for so long and this gentleman wanted you know this picture to be out there and they waited so long to get it yeah. done it just goes to show you know anybody that says the overnight success is you know that's crazy there's so much waiting especially in, in the writing field too and uh, that interview just it, it just mesmerized me and, yeah. and it really re reinvigorated uh you know, doing what we're doing. I remember that it was a great get for you yeah, guys. It was really nice. Yeah. I, I, I had to. What about you? What do you think your top? Uh, uh, I mean, that is one of my yeah, tops for that's, sure. Yeah, that's, we we were felt, we were so both floored after that show. It was just just natural yeah. high for so long. Yeah, yeah it was right. amazing because I got to meet him at a screening and then spoke uh, with yeah. him afterwards, and yeah. I was just like, "Did you throw an invite there?" I mentioned or... about the show then, really? and um. I often wonder how often that works. Yeah. I mentioned it at the show, and when he seemed interested, I was like, kind of like, What do I awesome. do now? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, because they're always weird about not letting you give them a card or anything. But he was so just open and wanted, and I remember asking me about um, my comedy experience and my experience at the Groundlings and all that, and I was like, wait, I would ask you questions. <laughs> like, I was like, you're so amazing. Uh, and then, yeah, we just followed up, and- um, yeah, Got him on well, if you don't ask, well, you know what you're gonna do. Yeah, right? you, what are you gonna you get know? him? No, and you, then you, what? You, you where know? you are now? We we have a a, a, a guest that we've oh been trying gosh. to get on for a while. We have a guest we're really trying for to get on over a year, and we've met him, and he even has made appearances in our videos uh, at the LA Comedy Shorts <laughs> Film Festival. Weird Al. 
He popped in. <laughs> no. No, he it's popped funny. into our video. <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise? But <laughs> Tom Cruise, yeah. Bill, it was, it was I'm going to throw out Bill Murray. It's Bill Murray. It is a Bill. No. But it, it is a Bill. Bill Nye's a science guy? We won't, say the name, we won't <laughs> say the name right now, but it, it's somebody that, that now it is something that we are, are creating this uh, this whole thing. I'm Bill Cosby. Like the, uh, oh, I, th- I think you might be I able to get him. I bet she's gettable. Yeah. <laughs> I think your windows just on. opened up. Only yes, for a little don't while, don't drink right? anything or eat anything he gives you, Natalie. Stop. You know, we ask uh, a question on our show. Uh who are your ideal TV parents? That's a, a, we we play a game called Hollywood Close Ups Quick and Quirky Game, and that's one of the questions. And my when we asked each other, we did an episode where we did that, and my parents are the Cosbys. Yeah, wow. And it, Cliff I was, and Claire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, who'd I say? I think I said Marge and, and Homer. And Homer. I, I think you said. I think, so. I think you did. I think you said the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. I think so. And a lot of. I mean, a lot of people on the show have. Said you know the Cosby, the Huxtables, the, Huck, yeah. the Huxtables, they're the ideal. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, you. You Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, but drumming. Felicia Rashad is still show. a very strong mother figure. Do mm-hmm. Lee has Felicia Rashad done anything that we know about? No. Yeah. What kind of drugs is she dealt in? No. But didn't she marry uh, Chris Carter? <laughs> no. Um, who's she married to? Oh, uh, um, Ahmad Rashad. Rashad. Yeah, yeah. She used to be Felicia Allen. She's just a bitch. What? What? <laughs> but do we have to change? <laughs> but but <laughs> how do we know that in a quantifiable way? And scene. But do we have to change the comedy bit? Unbelievable. Right? Because I'm going to go with Mr. Drummond. Come on the show, Felicia. Mr. Drummond. Mr. Mr. Drummond's my 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 TV parent. <laughs> oh yeah, Mr. Yeah. Drummond. So you don't even you take don't even a, want a mom. Just, just yeah. swinging bachelor dad, Mr. There Drummond, you know. millionaire bachelor dad. Was he? Swinging? He did have money. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Was he swinging? He's a millionaire. Did basketball. he ever bring a chick home on that show? That's right. He never did he? scored. I don't know he if never he ever... scored. I got to tell you, mine would be Kate and Allie. Oh. <laughs> I really like the Kate and Allie. That's a wow. good one. Totally yeah. want to bang them out. Right? Absolutely. Wow. And they weren't even lesbians. They were just friends living yeah. together. Helping Cagney and Lacey. Kids. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Fighting crime, mm. take care of the kids. Take care of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. Hey. Oh, Who's your dream get, though? I know whoever this bill is, you're working on him, but who would like, <laughs> if you got the call... <laughs> Yes. Whoever this, bill this bill is. Whoever this bill is, sure. Um, um, bill Shatner. Oh, I'm going to try to guess. I'm going to try to guess who this oh, fucking bill is. Nah. Bill Paxton. Bill is Paxton. Bill here? Is Bill here right Bill's now? Bill's not here. He's not here right no, now? No, well, William Shatner might be Is now. he? But he's right here right no, now? I, I don't understand. There. Oh. I, thought he was here. I thought he was here just for a second. He's egging you Just on. for a second, I know. But a dream okay. get. Who's your dream get? Ah, oh, gosh. Paul Preston. I Jesus. know, see? And we already we got, got him. About, Our we, dreams we have come true, right? We have more to live for. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, I mean, gosh, you could go anything. I mean, you know, obviously it's going to be uh, uh, somebody from the streets. Uh, no, nah, I don't know. I'm um, just street. <laughs> just street Most of our guests, we just go downtown, just and scoop up a guy, <laughs> somebody on the street, talk about acting. We just, just walk down street. La Cienega. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it is LA. Find. I'm sure that there's a All lot right, well, of me, uh, washed up actors on the street. Let streets. me ask you this because I think okay. this is a maybe just an accidental byproduct of doing your own thing and doing something that encourages people from the industry to come in. Have you found that it's been easier to meet casting directors, directors, writers, producers, people that could hire you because you have a different form other than I'm going to hope that my headshot gets picked. I hope that I get the audition. And then when I go in there, I hope they like me. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's already uh, it's already uh, uh, pushed our our um, mindset and our careers and our confidence and our level up a different notch. It really has. I mean, you go in the door, it's like, there's Bonnie. Yeah, yeah, not exactly. like. Oh, and you that? had I'm you scared. got to know her on your own terms. So it's different. Yeah, and you right. get to know you know there you know certain. You didn't have to pay things. for it. What do you guys make of that? <laughs> <laughs> These uh, <laughs> right? casting director workshops you got to pay for. Don't care for those. I don't either. Yeah. You get more face time with them by having them on your show. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it is one on one. And 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 you know uh, part of the whole business, you know that is uh, you guys are actors. You know that it's following up, mm-hmm. and you got to follow up with these people. And, you know, it's like we're getting ready to take our Christmas photos, and we're going to yes. send those out. You know, and we already did ours last oh, week. You did. Be in touch. Yes, See? we always do one that can kind of go to our friends and to the industry. Exactly. Yeah, and it has to be yeah. clever and cute, and we always have to look nice and lit right. It's yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> and expect but, that in triplicate uh, with a exactly. With a funny, funny our sign. resume is on the back. Signed. Yeah, but yeah, I but think yeah, so. Yeah. What do you think? I think I think it's it's and and it takes. It takes time just like anything else. It's a whole new world. You guys have been doing this show for a while, too. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it just takes some time to, to, to build that rapport. And, uh, you know, we're, we're both coming on. Uh, we're both from the East Coast and coming off of, a, a you know, the 10-year mark for the mm-hmm. actors and, and writers, producers, whatever. And so, yeah, I feel like big things are coming. 
and I and and rightly so. We're 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 working our asses off to do it. And I love that attitude. People. Some people yeah. might say, 10 years, I'm just about done here." Yeah. <laughs> and like and, ten and years, too. it's right around the corner. I think a lot of people. My friend, who's a casting director, and her husband. When she, when I first moved out here, I met her, and I'd only been here a couple of weeks, and she'd been here a couple of years. And about year seven, and her husband's really good friends with a famous person. About year seven, he started to do well, and now he's doing great. But it took seven years, and he knew people mm-hmm. before he started to get more, uh, more auditions and more confidence mm-hmm. and new people. Natalie, right. who was it that's, mm-hmm. that was talking about being in line that was the greatest thing we got being in line in the in the the airplane line and was that, people leaving was that steve tom i think it was steve tom might have been steve tom steve tom who we just had on again he was our first second recurring guest yeah, yeah. on the show he was in dumb and dumber too and uh yeah he told a story about yeah you're in line you know and there's people getting out of line all the time and moving back home and all that oh, but yeah. if you stay in that line you're gonna get up to the front that'll and happen in one in two years most of the time right people will be like i'm lonely i got no friends mm-hmm. and often and mostly that most of the time i think then mm-hmm. work even it's like i just don't know anybody and yeah. i'm going back to new york where all my friends what are. is it like to th- i think it's like a three year to stay in la and then after seven you're in something mm-hmm. like that like yeah. it's it's mm-hmm. some kind of stat well like i've had that. this theory about la that it, it's at least a five-year cycle before you start meeting the same person twice which is what you had mentioned you said you got to follow up and it's when you meet that person the second time that you can kind of make that impression mm-hmm. and i've long said that a couple of things about la one it's just full of people standing around waiting to be told what to do and this is not a slight but those are actors they're just waiting for somebody to to kind of tell them where to go and what to do and what to say and where to stand and if you can k- take control of that then you can control your own destiny and then the other thing i'm curious about your per- perspective on this from an actor is because i'm not as much an actor as maybe just an industry whore um <laughs> <laughs> and when he says whore he means giant slut <laughs> slutty yeah. whore tmz um, exactly <laughs> well you had mentioned it's about following up following up in in the old saying is, it's all about who you know in this business, okay? Mm-hmm. And when people say that outside of Hollywood, I think what they're suggesting is that, oh, you have to know a cousin or an uncle or, or a relative. But what I think it actually more, more appropriately, it, what it means is people in Hollywood do not have time to think about who to hire. Yes. They do not have time to look at resumes, do not have time to look at reels. And they go to Paul and they say, Paul, I'm going to hire you as my audio guy. Do you know anybody else that can help you? And Paul goes, yeah, I know the top six people. We're mm-hmm. not looking at resumes. We're not doing, and I, and I think that happens with actors. Hey, we need a heavy. Hey, we need a, a character guy. We need, do you know anybody? Mm-hmm. Boom, done. And that's what it means when they say it's who you know. It is. Right, and it's even if you know a casting director mm-hmm. and they're casting a project, you still just because they're casting a project doesn't mean they're thinking of you specifically. Mm-hmm. You still have to submit to them, but because you know them, um, you're able to follow up with them to let them know that you submitted on LA Casting or Actors Access or all that. So that you're also on the radar. Look that yeah, to be on the radar and they know who you so are. So what's the balance there? Where's the where's where do you do you have any advice that says you've crossed the line into annoyance or here is just proper due diligence in being on the radar? I think it depends on who it is. Singing gorilla at the door is that too much? It's be genuine. <laughs> Don't nothing more genuine than a singing gorilla. It, you know, <laughs> coming like from Lee, it's pretty genuine. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Right? Like if singing gorilla is your thing, in my opinion, then it works. But if I were to go in and be a singing gorilla, no, you send a singing gorilla. Oh, you no, okay. absolutely not. Singing gorilla <laughs> telegram. Never no. hire. You've never got no. a singing gorilla telegram. Damn. No, are you going to send gonna get one, one now? Yeah, I'll send you a singing yes. gorilla telegram. <laughs> T-shirt with your headset on. I'm an on. actor. <laughs> I'm an actor. You got. You got to know what the top works hat for and everything. Right? Hey, I'm I a... play 28 from 32. <laughs> tr- tr- trust yourself. Yeah. Trust yourself is is the only advice that I can give. You know, from well, I know me, and I can't be trusted. This is true as well. <laughs> <laughs> how do your uh, How did your acting careers come together? To where you became buds and started oh. putting on a show. Oh, wow. oh, this is great. Yeah. Well, we we actually uh, met uh, met. F- I worked with her. Uh, Was hus- my boyfriend at the time? Yeah. Right now, husband, husband to oh. be. That's yeah. Now the husband, and we worked together, and we uh, we we met that way. Uh, and yeah. My husband. I remember him saying, "Oh, this." This guy I work with, uh, he's doing exactly what you're doing and, and trying to make his own stuff and, and auditioning and all that. He's like, you guys should meet. And he introduced us. And after that. We, yeah. And, we, so and your husband said, here's a man you should meet. 
Yes. Lee, and it wasn't creepy, so stop it. All right, it's all right. All right. It's I a need boyfriend that kind of time. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it, it kind of it kind of just kind of fell into place, and, and we just uh, just really clicked and got along great, and then we took a class together and, and started, you know, making little short films and doing little things here, writing and, you know, directing and all that together, and it just kind of became this, what we like to call a career marriage. We became career marriage partners. Yeah. through that We took a class with Richard Lawson, and he had actually introduced that He was that in Poltergeist. He, they got Richard Lawson from Poltergeist. Who was he in Poltergeist? Well, he was, he was the guy, the black guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the best way to say it because he I, like, mean, he, yeah, I mean yeah. he's done a lot of stuff. He's done a just slew uh, of I think that, things, but that was his yeah, that oh, show that, my boys. took place in the suburbs. There was like the one black guy. I know you're talking uh, yeah, about. Yeah, and yeah, and just an amazing, amazing uh, uh, man and instructor. And and we took his film class, and it just kind of like clicked, and, and we started making these little films and this and that. I and picture lens flares going across like, his uh, face. Yeah, Am I right. <laughs> Not, not with Wayne. No, no lens. No, yeah, oh, yeah. in the movie. In I thought in the you meant in the movies we make. I was yeah, like, no, 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 no. Wayne yeah. is anti lens flares. No, he just walks around with lens no, flares. No, JJ Abrams <laughs> lens flares, yeah. Um, yeah, and it just kind of went from there. And then we just, uh, a couple years later, we, we did a short film, uh, that, a horror film that we did. And, and we just kept working together. And it just it's just been a good click and to do you know our podcast and and talk to other people and see if maybe you know no matter uh, of course we're doing the best we can to get out there and and keep pushing our careers forward you know if we can give any advice outside of regular we're there you know and that's and and talk to some of these people and right because the whole thing for me was that i wanted to when I moved here from New Jersey, this is the type of show I wish I could have listened to. Mm-hmm. To kind of just give insight, like, yes, oh, I like that. No, I, I don't want to do that, you know? And and I think the whole thing with Wayne and I at working together as a team is that um, I moved here right after college, uh, and Wayne came out here after working in Nashville as a commercial actor mm-hmm. and working in films and and in music videos. So it was kind of an interesting dynamic for us to both come to LA and pursue the career that mm-hmm. way. And then. How do you feel about all that work going back down to Tennessee and Atlanta now? And, and, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. about a local you know, hire, my friend. Well, I, I'm originally from Boston and then moved to Tennessee and did the majority of my work actually out yeah. of Tennessee. So mm-hmm. I did a whole bunch of country music videos and, you know, I'm not going to name drop, but a bunch of videos. And then. Lyle Lovett. It. Yeah. Toby Keith. No, but Garth, Garth, Brooks. Garth, Brooks, Garth Brooks, Toby Keith. Pam you Pellis, should never kind of name people. drop. Robert De Niro but, um, told me that. Yeah, De Niro. <laughs> yeah, me, me and De Niro, best friends. Um, but, uh, you know, did, <laughs> did a few jobs down there and. Uh, a few. Really, yeah, a really, lot. Um, <laughs> really built my resume up, and then uh, and then ended up uh, uh, moving out here to go. Hey, and now it basically it was like almost starting all over again. Yeah, oh, so that it t- is. That yeah. t- we came in from Chicago, and there we were able to make a living, and we were able to get auditions. Mm-hmm. It was very exciting. You come here, and that doesn't happen for about no. five years. Absolutely, <laughs> it absolutely means nothing at all. Nothing it was, at all. It was absolutely no. starting over yeah. again. Yeah. But um, I feel like I'm a lot more wiser. So with what she knows, what I've experienced, and what she experiences. And I don't know yet. It's a great dynamic. And, and you're not the same type. And I think that really helps. Uh, and, we know, worked on that. Yeah, yeah I think it's important. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, no, that's that. It, it is. We're both coming from opposite spectrums, you yeah. know, like which which are uh, our, our, our slogan for the show is uh, the bald and the beautiful. So there you and for a while, Natalie was the bald. Yes. Right. <laughs> what well, she decided to grow hair so that you guys wouldn't compete for roles was, anymore. Let's tell taller. you that was a bad decision. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a question for you. Thanks for telling um, me. Oh, or, no. I'd like to hear your re- response to this. I t- I've only taken one acting course. It was a, not a class. It was a, an eight-week course, I guess. You would call it a class, but I don't want you to think it was a single class. It was a class, but it was an eight-week. Yes. Have I over that? It was eight classes. Eight yes. classes. Okay. Got it. You. In the very, very first acting class. I can't wait. Uh, the acting, and this was in San Diego, Mecca. Of it was Reese of Witherspoon, industry. wasn't it? She showed her tits. <laughs> <laughs> it was and I said, I'm in. Um, you all had to do that in your first class. It was the best class ever. <laughs> the acting instructor said to, to the class, honestly, the very first Aww. thing out of her mouth was, if you want to be an actor, the mm. first thing you have to decide is how poor are you willing to be? And I was 22 at the time, and I remember thinking, I don't do poor very well, and I really should just probably leave now. Then she was probably a good teacher. Was she? Yeah. Well, did it make you decide to do something that makes you happier? Well, well not happy, just wealthier? 
Sadly, yes. Yep. But but um, See, so, I had already spent the four hundred dollars, so I needed oh. to stay for the eight classes. But I mean, do you firmly believe this? Is this something that you would subscribe to? Because I think that's one of the things people need to understand when they move to L.A. It is a big, hard, ugly, expensive town, and there town, is a town without pity. There mm-hmm. you go. And there's a struggle there. Here's the thing: it's it's changed over time. I feel like from the starving actor you know this was something that came out um i think from like risa brayman garcia the casting director do you remember forgive Mm -hmm. me if i'm not you know saying everything correctly but no you're dropping uh, the right names (laughs) (laughs) but from being the the starving actor to being the hungry actor yeah and when i read Mm -hmm. that i was like that changes everything because you know what yeah we we were taught that you're supposed to be poor and you're supposed to have any money and you're supposed to do all these things, but you need to have a full life in order to to be an actor and have all these experiences. So I think it's finding the balance with everything. So I don't think you necessarily have to be poor and living out of your car and all that. I, I mean, think you have to work in some way to make enough money to pay your bills, not be fancy, but at the same right. time... You never take time off. Our, our neighbor across the street, he's a nice guy. He's normal. He works a regular job. And one day, he he's very in, he's very inquisitive. He asked Paul. He's like, hey, Paul, come here. And Paul's like, yeah. And he goes, how do you guys afford to live in that house to drive cars? <laughs> because wow. he's seen us wow. not go to jobs, First right? Paul, dead on impersonation. <laughs> you, you play dead on. Dead on. But the thing that Paul was just like, well. I don't want to drop names, but Don across Don the across street. Don across the street. But the thing was funny. Is the, What's up, Don? Let's go to, Don had been watching us probably for a year or so going, why do I have to go to a job every day? And they have a house and cars and a dog. And I have a house and a wife and stuff. But they seem to never be at a job. But well, he has a retirement. Yes, we do not. But, but he's I think waiting what, to take to make what I'm his getting life at is I think that he comes home from work and watches TV mm-hmm. and is done for and the is day. done yeah. and takes Saturday and Sunday off. And the thing that I tell told myself because I did feel kind of weird about it. I'm like, yeah, that isn't fair. Then all of a sudden, when I was up at three o'clock this morning working on some sketches that I'm writing for a thing that I'm doing for free, and then I have another show that's free on Saturday, and I just got home from caroling for rich people and only got paid like twenty five dollars an hour, but I had to go all the way downtown. All of a sudden, I'm like, Don is probably fucking sleeping. <laughs> That's why yeah, I yeah. live this life, because we're hungry for this lifestyle, and we will work our asses off to get it. Mm-hmm. Right. It, hungry. It, it's it's you the know? key word. And like I said, there's nothing, you know, however anyone does it, I'm not bashing on anyone that decides to live in their car to do what they want to do. That's, yeah. But you have to decide what you want to do, mm-hmm. you know, and that does, I don't I don't think that. I almost feel like like the whole uh, that starving actor thing has gone to the wayside because exactly. honestly uh, the way here we are in society with everything's a phone and a computer and in in you got these electronic submissions to you know this part or this part and all that how the hell if you live out of your car you don't get Wi-Fi there and that's mm-hmm. you know what are you gonna do so it, it's not like you're you know I. I there's no knocking on the doors and giving your headshots anymore. Everything's in the computer. So I don't. I, I think hungry is the key word. You like have to saying. work two jobs: one you get paid for, and one you don't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in, until that switches around, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that starving actor thing works anymore. Friend of the show and former guest Dave Rosowski. I don't know if you mm-hmm. know Dave. Yeah, he's awesome. Uh, big Second City guy. And fuck that movie. Fuck that movie. That was the episode he was on. Nah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hated the the Lee Daniels the Butler, and um, oh. <laughs> he uh, he he posted something recently about. About, yeah, just don't call yourself a starving artist. It just diminishes your value and ask to get paid. You mm-hmm. do what you do well. Yeah. You know, and let's all change that word entirely. So I like hungry artists too. I'm going to mm-hmm. adopt that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we certainly are that. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you know what I haven't done? Uh, oh, speaking of guests of the show, you guys had Andrew DeWitt on your show, right? We did. Andrew's great, right? Yes. Hilarious. He, hilarious. Love him. Hilarious. What happened? He, he's yeah. on our show. Good question. I wasn't even. I was, <laughs> he's the best. I wasn't even here for the show, so I was up doing a musical up north, and I was listening to the show, laughing out loud because Andrew Dewitt was killing it. No, but the question of what happened is very appropriate. Yeah. The, the, Continue, Paul. His show is the only one of ours that's been pulled from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. That makes it surprise me. We had him on had a for Christmas a episode. episode. <laughs> Last year's Christmas episode. We know how much he loves Christmas, and, and, and it was he likes the, the dirtiest F-word. episode we've ever had. <laughs> yeah. 
I can't even remember what movie we were talking him. about because whatever it was. I am a grown veered, man doing grown man we things. We veered into ass eating. Yeah. For majority uh, of now the Now this time. show's not like going to be aired. But here's the thing. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'd like to take a little grievance with YouTube. Yes. I, the other day, Howard Stern was talking to someone, because I'm an avid listener if you haven't figured it out, to somebody about um, watching this guy kill himself on TV. Like oh. he was a p- politician, he held a press conference, he oh, pulled out a gun, horrible. he blew his head oh, I remember this. I remember it's, that. It's, it's on YouTube. Is it on oh, YouTube? That's you can watch the whole thing. And these guys are talking about how horrifying oh. it is, and they're scarred for life. I'm like, wow. So I watched it. I, I'm horrified, and I'm scarred for yeah. life. And we talk about ass eating, and that gets pulled. Thanks wow. a lot, censorship. So, you know, YouTube, I know you're watching this because you're watching everything. But make it easy on the comedy. We're just making people laugh. Is that the one where he has an envelope? He comes to a podium. Yep. He takes ah! it out of the envelope. Yep. Puts it right through. And yep. I accidentally saw that. I didn't That's know what was going to happen. I can't. Oh a lot of people accidentally oh saw God. that. It was, it was a lie. I will tell you, it's not a movie. It's a, not a movie moment. Yeah. No, oh. no. Yeah, it's... Well, that's. The, I think that's the difference. That you're doing the movie guys, and and this this real stuff. It just it scares the shit out of you, and just you're like, you know, you're shocked and everything. I can watch a, a horror movie or any like a hostel or any kind of like gross Pyramid, movie. that like, movie that's like, coming like, out this week, like Pyramid, yeah, <laughs> with Dick Clark. Um, <laughs> I love that earlier, um, but you you know, and it doesn't bother me. I don't even think twice about it because I've got enough sense to know well this is fake. But then you see this this crap that's on mm. Facebook or these things that are thrown out right now uh, of these these videos of people like I'm sick of seeing those I understand the censor yeah. of those but, but they're not doing it. But they're, they're not getting rid of ass eating. But ass no, eating. they need to God. keep more Keanu Reeves giving nice young ladies a seat. More of that. <laughs> that made me happy. Lovely. Natalie and Wayne by the way is your website, right? Natalieandwayne.com. Who won that battle? Obviously you did. Alphabetical. What do you really think that there was a battle? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bald and the beautiful Natalie and Wayne. Oh, I see. You take yeah. precedence. I had to. You yeah. take precedence in the adjective. Yeah, it's ladies oh, first. Oh. I still have a lot of chivalry. He is like cool breeze. Right yeah. here. It was kind of like him mm-hmm. giving up the seat, seat on the. Yeah. All right, I need to ask. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Go ahead. We ask this of every guest. You get guest, that today. <laughs> every guest who comes on the show. What are your favorite movies of all time? Well, your favorite Wayne and your favorite Natalie. Uh, okay. Well, you know, I, I'm gonna go. Have to go with. Uh, it depends on the genre. I, I can't give that classic answer. Really? It, it really does. Over time, I whittled it down to one. But, the category uh, is your favorite movie. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. All right. Well, I guess uh, it had to be it had to be Star Wars. Not a bad choice. No. All and right. usually, I, and I've said this before, when you ask someone their favorite movie of all time, you generally mean besides Star Wars. Because mm, okay. otherwise, everyone has <laughs> well, to then, say Star Wars. Right. There you go. Okay. So then, okay, one that I can say. But that's there, a great choice. Well, but. yeah. I mean, I mean so you get Star you Wars, you that. get Raiders of the Lost Ark, you get, I mean, you get, um, my God, what about, I mean, you could just, Jaws. <gasps> Jaws. Has anyone movie. said Jaws? I can sit there. I don't it think doesn't. So. It doesn't matter if it's. I've got it, it on DVD, scary. Blu-ray, yeah. and it mm-hmm. doesn't matter if all of a sudden it's the middle or the beginning on on regular TV, TBS in the afternoon. There's Jaws. I can't turn away. Yeah. I'll combine the two with a quick story, and I probably have said this before, but I really enjoyed J.J. Abrams' TED Talk, mm-hmm. where he mm. talked about. He showed a clip from Jaws, and it's the scene where Brody's had this horrible day, and his son sits down next to him, and you know Brody just can't keep the beach safe. And he does this. He folds his hands in mm-hmm. front of him. The kid folds his hands. They play this little mirror game, and he makes the kid laugh. Mm-hmm. And and Abram said, okay, when Jaws came out, we had Alligator. We had The Swarm. We had all these animals attack movies. But that's the scene you should be copying from Jaws, mm-hmm. not the fact that it's a killer monster on the loose. Yeah. And I think that's why, because he says things like that, we're going to have a good Star Wars sequel. Oh. Mm-hmm. And no lens flare. Oh, let's hope he there's no jar Did he really? Jar. He promised that yeah. a year ago. No lens flare. So I, I'm looking Isn't forward. Isn't the trailer already out with like tons of lens flare? I hope not. I don't know. I, I think I saw Jar Jar, jar type it. things too. No. I hope not. No, 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 no. 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 There'll be no Gungans. No. No. How about Gungadins? None of those. Okay. No. Natalie, your favorite movie? The Wizard of Oz. There you go. All right, all See how right. easy it is, Wayne? Right. <laughs> That's why it's natalieandwayne.com. <laughs> Gotta let her answer first. <laughs> All right, Wizard of Oz. All right. Wizard of Oz. I saw that movie recently, and every time I see it, mm-hmm. actually, I'm reminded of all these scenes that are in it that you just forget about. Yep. Yeah. Isn't it weird? Mm-hmm. Like you remember two or three scenes, and then you go, "Oh, there's that whole scene. Oh, there's that whole thing." And oh my God, the scarecrow gets unstuffed or whatever. It's like I didn't realize it's true. If you watch that movie as an adult, there's some scary parts in that movie. Yeah. You yeah. know the the yeah. the. the, the He's getting torn apart. The monkeys the, are scary. And nobody monkeys, cared. Right? Yeah. Nobody yeah. cared. No, it didn't matter. The, 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 you play to the adults, 
and it trickles down to the kids. I think that's how you always have the most success. When I hear people talking about the new Star Wars movie, and they're talking about, oh, it's a kid's movie. It's not if mm-hmm. it's done well. Right. The best stuff, Raiders, I mean, they melt people's faces, but it doesn't matter. The kids are fine. Yeah. Would uh, If Wizard of Oz came out today, what would the, the, uh, the rating, what kind of rating would it get? Is Tom Cruise in it? Mm. <laughs> Not I, mean, kind of, not. I mean, like like a PG thirteen, an R. What kind of rating? Oh, I think, think it's a get? thirteen, a PG thirteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me about Bert Lars' horrible past. <laughs> yeah, kid diddler. Oh, let's go from the. Uh, <laughs> let's go from I the. Wish, uh, <laughs> I wish there was a second camera for Natalie's face. <laughs> and she just glared at me like, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> and kid diddler will get kid diddler. Don't, don't oh give anyone God. the YouTube address yeah, for the show. Done, won't be done, won't be on there for long. All right, let's uh, talk. About, let's go from the movies, uh, the best movies of all time, to what did you see this week? What did you see this week? Table. Uh, Karen and I had mentioned Wild. What else? Well, it was Thanksgiving. Yes. So, Plain Strains and Audible. Girl. Yes. We, we saw that, too. We saw it, too. I did. Yeah. You did? We all I saw did. it? I, I did not did cry, cry my face But you've seen it every I time. Cry. Yes. Every time you I, go away. I cry now when, whenever uh, they have their first argument and... Uh, John Candy talks about I like me and my wife likes yeah. me and I lose my shit. Uh, yeah, when you know when it's going and you see how well they play all those scenes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. quite good. Del Griffin, mm, you know, know. <clears throat> shower curtain ring division. Del- I, I can I can tell that whole you movie. Can't so good. Sell. You can't rent a car with shower curtain rings. <laughs> <laughs> and no, he's, he's such a great salesman. Best too. supporting actor nomination mm-hmm. that should have yeah, been. Yeah, should have been. I I do not play with my balls. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Larry Bird doesn't do as much ball handling in one night as he did in an hour. I do not play, play with, with my, my balls. balls. <laughs> Such a good movie. Oh, I saw Stuart Saves His Family. Oh. God, that is a Thanksgiving movie, isn't it? It, it yeah, sort it of is. It takes place in holiday time. It takes place in that time between... Well, it's all year. They do hit like Fourth of July and stuff, but it kind of really comes down to, I go home for Thanksgiving, that's it, I'm not going back. Mm. Oh, wow. I cried during that movie. Have you guys seen that movie? No. Oh. Stuart it, it, saves it, it, his family. The only thing I can think of, I know it's the little mouse, right? It is no, Stuart. Stuart. Oh, no, no. I was thinking, I was thinking of mouse. Too. Or yeah, I was thinking of it. No, no. This What's is our congressman. Michael McDonald. Al oh. Franken. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no. This is not a little mouse. Um, In the red shoes. It's actually, it's actually a congressman, uh, Al Franken, who's got great thoughts on policy for Minnesota and the country. Oh, but um, he's a really great actor in this, and I know it's one of those Saturday live weird character movies and all that but it is so good it's you know so what good. i saw um uh, it was a little before thanksgiving but I, I i went to the screening of cake have you guys seen that yet? oh i'm going to that tomorrow so I, no spoilers oh. but what'd you all think right, I, I i won't spoil it, but uh phenomenal job really yeah oh, good have to give her uh a kudos Let's say jennifer and aniston I, and i got yeah. to see jennifer ah. aniston and she was about as far from me to the camera oh nice and it was uh, a dream come That's true good. yeah she'll like, be at the q a on friday as yeah. well this is the most wonderful time of the year nothing love but q and a's yeah so great. love to hear movies. what you guys think of that one anyway, right, well, I, we'll, we'll talk about yeah, next week we'll about, yeah. um well because of your show last week i had to put on i am santa I oh, Santa. I am Santa yeah. Claus. I am Santa Claus. Yeah. yeah. The Mick Foley movie. Because wow. he he just kept talking. You were talking about it. And I was like, I need to see what this is about. Mm-hmm. What is happening? I can't believe it. So interesting. Yeah. Which was your favorite Santa? Oh, I don't know. For those of you who don't know, who may not have heard last week's show, I Am Santa Claus is a documentary of real beard Santas. Mm-hmm. And you had uh, Santa I, Jim, who was the uh, the gay Gay Santa, bear. the right. bear. Right. The one who's been getting a lot and of And then Russell. Stuff. Russell, this kind of persnickety one. Yeah, a little. And he lives at home with his daughter in the basement. In the ba- yeah. Mm-hmm. And Santa Claus, because he legally changed his name. The one from Brooklyn or from Jersey? Santa Frank. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then... Uh, and then the persnickety one down here in South- Southern California. He yeah, was well, kind of... persnickety. He was well, pious. I get, okay, yes. He was a Christian-y one. Yeah. Who had probably the best job of them all. I like Santa Jim. I do, too. I like Santa Just Jim. today on their Facebook page, I Am Santa Claus, uh, their movie's Facebook page posted a photo because someone had written something about, like, you, you need to put something like gay content on this. Ugh. I tune in and my kid watched uh, Two Men so? Kiss or whatever. First of all, I think the movie's rated R. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Because it's for adults. It's yeah, a, Mor- Morgan Spurlock, right? Morgan yeah. Spurlock is behind mm-hmm. it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they, they did a little Photoshop and put gay content on the on the DVD cover. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, so out of those guys, which do? ones that make your, you feel better? And then, of course, um, Santa Mick. So which one was your favorite? Well, Santa Mick is... Wow. You Santa. throw him in there. He was yeah. perfect. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. The, He's so excited the about The Santa Claus that is the guru was pretty amazing. The one yeah. with the scent... Who yes, wanted to smell yes, like this, cookies? It's, it's, yeah, like says that his sweat is smells like that or whatever, like peppermint or something. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I'm like, but what? I never thought about it, you know. And like the what's the ta- the thing on the trailer is like, who's your kid? Whose lap is your kid sitting on or something yeah. like that? And I was like. I never thought about that yeah. and who, who the mm-hmm. Santa is. And how they were talking about how, like, they go through training mm-hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff, which is, well, yeah, it, what an interesting it, idea. And it's in the news. I guess someone, an autistic kid down in San Diego, came to see Santa with a pit bull, and Santa doesn't like pit bulls. So the cel- Santa and the elf kicked the kid out. <gasps> said, we're not going to wow. see you. This, this autistic kid with the dog, a helper dog, like a dog Aww. that's with oh. the kid. Okay. You can't do that. They can't. They've been fired. But that was like all the um, news for a while. What yeah. a jerk. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to see that kid. Can you imagine that? The kid's all scarred for life. And Santa tells him to get lice. Get lice? Get lost. Take a hike. <laughs> you know what? Putting the get words lice together. would have been better. You get lice. <laughs> kid's already got lice. Mm. Um, so. Also, uh, Paul decided, and I never do this because I can't, I can't do anything else else when this movie goes on but for some reason paul's like oh we're gonna put up the tree because i always put on music when i put up the tree because i can focus on music and put up the tree he puts on love actually oh i can't have that because there are too many of my boyfriends in it and (laughs) i can't i i do that thing where you you're putting up the garland and then you just sort of sit on the edge of the couch then you sort of are on the couch and then you know you're lying down just staring at the tv and it's 20 minutes you haven't done a damn thing I can't deal with the fact that Colin Firth is in it. I forgot that Liam Neeson was in it. And then, of course, Hugh Grant is in it. And now my new boyfriend from The Walking Dead, who I didn't know was in it, but now I know who he is, and so now I love him more, is in it. Andrew and Lincoln. then the guy from The uh, Office, who's also a hobbit, is in it. I didn't know I loved him. I can't. And then Alan Rickman's in it. Yeah. How can people watch that movie? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> That movie is out of hand. So good. You know, it's I, I've Christmas yet, porn. I've yet to watch Die Hard, though. I do watch yeah, that every Christmas have, I possibly to. can. That's automatic. I have a Plane Strange and, and, yeah, Die Hard. Uh, no doubt. No anyway, doubt. Love Action. But we watched Love the, Action. We, we took a while to put our decorations up. We ended up That's because I was Grinch, watching Love Actually. The Grinch and then Plane Strange and on yeah. to wash our, the Grinch out of our. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, which Jim one? Carrey, the Jim Carrey? Yeah. I love that one. Do you? He's hilarious in what I think is not a good movie, but he's hilarious. I mean, he gives those guys everything he's got, mm-hmm. and he's really funny. But, you know, yeah. first of all, it's a okay adaptation. They've <laughs> added a lot of weird <laughs> shit yeah, to that. The consumerism yeah. angle and everything, and we don't need all that. But, um, you know, like the evil Grinches and stuff, we got evil enough. Or the evil who's, I should say. Yeah. We got evil right. enough in the Grinch. But I guess I got to fill two hours. But Carrie's hilarious. Yeah. Mm. Jazzer size. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I think that's everything. Oh, and I got on a movie jail on Zoolander. Oh, we saw Zoolander. Wow, Jamie, we saw Zoolander. Oh, because that showed up on Netflix. It was yeah. so I good. Have you, you ever seen it? No, and I oh, enjoyed wow. it like crazy. Wow, They're hysterical. Yeah. Yeah, have just, you seen it? Oh, just, my God. It's Stiller, Farrell, Owen Wilson just acting as crazy as mm-hmm. they... Like, it's like, hey, guys, let's get together and just be bonkers you know what? for two hours. I think Lee would like it because they're making jokes about male models. And, you know, Lee will be like, well, I think they look good. I don't understand what the big deal is. That is one of the problems <laughs> I have with Ben Stiller. I have not seen Zoolander. And, and I find... Maybe I'm projecting. This could be true. Yes. But... He he really fancies himself a good-looking man, and he's not. But and he's always casting himself as a hunky it. guy, because I think that's his way of living out his fantasy of being a hunky guy. But I don't think he really thinks he's hunky. He's a knuckle dragon monkey. Oh. That guy is. Hideous. <laughs> oh my god! You know what? I look over at Paul. We're watching the movie, and at one point, Owen Wilson's character is introduced. And now that's a good-looking man. Fuck. Oh my God, see the movie. I look over at Paul, I'm like, 
he's kind of sort of amazingly gorgeous. <laughs> and Paul's like, he's really good looking. <laughs> I know, I was attracted to him. We're like, was... he's kind of sexy as hell. His hair was a golden I, fleece. I, I like oh, that. Geez. I like the old Owen Wilson roles that he, he was used to play. Great. Yeah. Like he's, I don't know if he's, he isn't any, didn't he freak out or something? Yeah, I think yeah. he tried to kill him. Yeah. yeah, and and ever since then, it just doesn't seem like his, he doesn't have that same, I don't know, that same flair because that like the little roles that he played in uh, Meet the Parents, you know, and talking about building the, you know, the Christian Ark and mm-hmm. just hysterical. Like it's his little idiosyncrasies and, and now I just don't feel like, I don't know, maybe he hasn't done a, a decent picture since then, but yeah, I mean. He would be an like amazing big. Spicoli. Oh. oh. Yeah, but we don't need to remake that. Don't give him any ideas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> give the world any ideas. Oh, sorry, sorry. No more. No more. This is remakes. not a patent pending. Yet. But <laughs> but I think Zoolander gets me out of movie jail. My now comedy movie jail is a movie that you should have seen by now, but you haven't. Okay. And so you're in jail because of it. <laughs> Zoolander was it. Now I think old school puts me in jail. I've never oh, seen I've never it. Seen oh. And I think I probably should have by now. Mm. You guys got a movie jail? <laughs> Gosh, oh man, what have I ever seen? Um, I have to think about Wayne that one. Will Put me in movie jail, and I'm not gonna uh, talk Star about Star Wars. Oh. What? Oh. Yes. What? I, I will be that guy. I didn't think this was gonna come up. Hey, wait a minute. You know Michael J. Nichols. Here's the thing. And you've never seen. I Star have Wars. seen. I can't believe. You <laughs> I have seen. I can't believe nothing. Mike talks to you. Nothing. I can't believe you haven't seen Star Wars. <laughs> Right. No! <laughs> Do you realize okay. you're it? <laughs> okay, here's it's the done. thing. There's a lot of... I have I have attempted to watch Star Wars many times. Mm-hmm. Um, I have seen the Phantom edit. Oh. Mm-hmm. Just so you know. All right. Okay, okay. so hopefully my Jay Nichols and I will stay friends. He knows that I have not watched... Uh, he knows. Wow. How but has I he have, not told me? I have attempted to watch it many times, and I want to like watched, it. I have just, you watched it in a theater? No. Maybe whenever it's re-released, you should check it out. What the has theater. been thwarting your attempts? Mm-hmm. Tell us, Natalie. Maybe the small screen on, just doesn't do it for what do you. Mean, what do you mean you try? Us, you Natalie. sit down, and then there's a knock at the door. And... I have I have surround sound and a good screen TV. Why haven't you watched it? Every time I've watched it, I've fallen asleep. Oh. 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 See? Oh. See? Under wow. the bus. What are you, a communist? Have you seen Under Home Alone? Bus. Of course. Oh, what do you mean? Of <laughs> <laughs> It's not that I, it's not for lack, like I said, it's, I want to watch it, and actually I watched the new trailer, and I'm very excited about it. I think I need to go see it in the theater, and I think that I need to um, have a whole, like, Maybe Star it'll Wars. be re-released next year when it's well, in Well, you the- have one year, if not in the theater for a re-release, to see the first three movies. Don't bother with the... the, the Episode one, two, and three. Four, five, and six. Star yeah. Wars, Empire, and Jedi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't even. And that's see all you need one. because okay. the new movie is a sequel to Jedi. To Thirty that. years in the future. Yeah. So forget the prequels. I'm the I worst. I'm episode. the worst. Yeah. It's nothing against you know. Hey, the makers of that movie. I understand at all. that, but I do want to take up a small cause to change that. Mm-hmm. No, I do. Possible. I do want to tell you Thank that you uh, I read a story where there. where uh, <laughs> Princess Leia she was doing her costume fitting and she came out. And she showed George Lucas, they were like, what do you think? And he immediately said, they don't wear underwear in the future. <laughs> She's like, all right. So they had to take her bra off. For the record, it was a long time ago. Nicely uh-huh. done. Nicely done. So it's one of those pervy movies. Just know that. I don't have one. I, I, I watch a lot of movies. I don't Wayne's have seen one every movie. I, I don't feel like I have to see It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, oh I haven't wow. seen that, that's right? That's yeah, movie that's jail. on the list. We tried uh, to get that the I have day, not but Zoolander was free, so... I have not seen all of Gone with the Wind. Is that a bad? I hear the first crime? half is the only part. Is that a crime? Scene? Yeah, you, it, it devolves into a soap opera. Yeah. The second half, but yeah. all that Civil War stuff is great. Yeah. So Just, maybe if you didn't see the second half, you're okay. Uh, oh, okay. have you seen Ghostbusters? Of course. Of course. Uh, actually, don't watch, of course. Anything. It was actually on, uh, it was actually on the other day. I watched it. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Well, all, all of me. All of me. Oh, classic Steve. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Man with two brains. Definitely. Three Amigos. Uh, how, how about uh, uh, the, Parenthood? Uh, the, uh, the one, with the black and white one that they put together was Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Yes, thank oh, you. That's a good one. Way Sergeant Bilko. So. Yep. Wow, you're good. Steve Martin. <gasps> Not that you need to see Sergeant Bilko. Steve Martin. Uh, my Blue no, Heaven. But... Breakfast at Tiffany's. You know what? Yes. Never seen it. Oh. oh! No, I've seen, seen it. That one. All right, you found one on me, but I'll you know. 
I know there's a lot of classics. I think I should put that at the top of my classics never seen list because right now it's high noon. I don't think a lot of people have seen high noon anyway, but a lot of people have seen Breakfast at Tiffany's. You yeah. know what? It, you know, every once in a while, if you find that very rare here, that rainy day, you can find like the high noon. So, when, you know, you find a high noon or you find like a Maltese Falcon or something you haven't seen. And oh, it's kind of cool. Lee, they have just, that on TBS, don't they? Yes, that'll be uh, airing over the weekend. That's where right. Lee watches movies. That's where all my movies are. <laughs> Did you see it? What were they playing over the weekend? Uh, I, I didn't. I was out of town. And Ghostbusters. They didn't have TBS out of that town. We picked up your slack. Yeah, that's five movies, I think. We they saw. didn't have TBS. I'm sorry. Out of town, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, well, listen, it's I time have for one last question. Uh, yes, we have our posters in the studio. Paul gives me the list of what to put up. And so I put up Indiana Jones and the one with the skull that he doesn't believe exists. And uh, we also have Grumpy Old Men up. Can you tell me the reasoning between yeah. those two? Grumpy Old Men just because it's snowing in Buffalo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, I don't want to give away the ending of Pyramid, but there's probably a spaceship in there. Oh, all right. <laughs> and now I it's just, time for Karen's celebration of the birthdays of those who make the movies. It's time for Karen's birthdays. Take it away. All right. Let's start off our week of birthdays by wishing a very happy birthday to C. Thomas Howell. Happy birthday, C. Thomas Howell. Who turns 47 but can play anywhere from an outsider to a black man. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> Knew it. Did I not say that when I wrote it? I was going to write it and I said, no, I'm going to let Lee improvise that moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, let Lee take that bullet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you could tell that there weren't a lot of my favorite people this week for celebrity birthdays. So I dug deep and learned about C. Thomas Howell. <laughs> First thing I'm, I'm surprised to find out is only 47. Only I mean, 47. He's been doing it forever. Yeah. He I guess he started young. has been in everything. Just not much of stuff that I've seen. So I started going to his IMDb page. I'm starting to scroll down. And it gets to about 2006. And I've scrolled three times since I was since thinking. Since 2006. I, well, between 2014 and 2006, or three scrolls, and I'm like, oh my god, I haven't even gotten to the beginning of his career. I kept scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Eventually, I got to The Outsiders, and then I eventually got to E.T. And I was like, oh my god, this guy has been in Holy everything. Holy balls. Yes. He was in E.T. Now, yeah. get this. He's, he was the older brother. I yes. just... No, he's not the older brother. He's, oh. the, he's a friend he's of the a older brother. He's a sarcastic oh, okay. like, friend oh, of the older brother. Crap. I'm but thinking. get this. This is kind of fun. So, he was in E.T., and we all know this joke, and I'm sure it was around before E.T., but I think the first time I ever saw it was in E.T., or little kids around the world quote this joke. So um, our little hero there, what's his name, Elliot, he finds E.T., and he figures out that he's not like an animal or something. He's actually from space. And so I don't know exactly. I won't be able to do the, the lines correctly like he did it. But he comes in, and he goes, where is he from, Uranus? Get it? Your anus? Get it? And he says it like five times. Does he see Thomas Howell? <laughs> yeah, he gets to line? say the your anus line. <laughs> so that's good to know. And I'm sure little kids hear that for the first time and go, that's the greatest thing. No. I wrote I down penis breath when I heard Elliot say it. Penis I was like, penis, penis breath. That's a good that's one. That's a good Elliot. one. Yeah. So uh, that's another thing about C. Thomas Howell that I learned. But here's something fun about him. He's been in so many movies that I've comprised a game about it. <sighs> Ooh, everybody can play. Uh, there's there's Hello. no losers here, only winners. Um, I'm going to list four movies titles, and you tell me which one he wasn't in. Mm. And I don't know how you will tell the difference. <laughs> All right, so three of these he's actually been in. All right, here we go. Let me wrap my head around the C. Thomas Howell canon. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Okay, and these are from 1984 or something. Till the present. And we're talking within, some of these are within the last couple of years. Hmm. All right, here we go. <clears throat> a Magic Christmas, Bigfoot Wars, Confessions of a Womanizer, Behind Enemy Lines. He was not in Behind en Enemy Lines. I will go with that. I will agree. I will agree. You know why you part. said that? Because it's the only movie you heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I thought he might have had a small part. No. <laughs> well, the others were Hallmark movies, right? Hallmark no, Canada. they're all actually been released. That's the are other right? thing. Are we right? You are right. <gasps> okay. But it's because, I think, it's the only one you think you've heard of. Yeah. Like, have you heard of Confessions of a Womanizer? No, but I was nope. so rooting for the Bigfoot one. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Meaning, I hope he was in that. <laughs> he was yeah. in that. Great. All right, good. We, we all won there. <laughs> yes. So, here we go. <laughs> Hoboken Hollow. Nursey. Some of these I did make up to make it easier. Hollow Point. And dangerous indiscretion. Nursey. <laughs> uh, 
I'll go with that. Hollow Point sounds like a low rent thriller you might have been in. Mm-hmm. And the well, last one sounds like a low rent which, which, erotic thriller you might have been in. I was going to go with the last one. What's the last one again? The last one is Dangerous Indiscretion. Yeah, that's sounds... Which sounds like a book, like a, one of those trashy novels. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Mercy with... sounds like something you'd come up with. Well, so. she, she laughed at it, but then I thought maybe that was too easy. I don't right? know. Right? See Thomas Howell. It, oh. Dangerous. Okay. Okay. So, actually, um, well, I'll tell you the, the whole point of how I figured this out later. Hollow Point, actually. Oh. He's not. Yes. He, he is like a thriller. Believe it or not, he is not in Hollow Point. Wow. All right. But there's a rhyme and reason to the ones he's not in, which was the only way I could come up with the game. All right. Continuing on. The Love Boat, The Next Wave. He is totally in that. He is, he is on, he is the, the lead in that. The Wrong Man, Sleeping Dogs, Hildago. Oh, he's definitely in Hildago. Um, <laughs> he's in Hildago? Sleeping Dogs. I will say he's not in Hildago. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Hidalgo 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 movie, right? I don't, I don't, yeah, Hidalgo. No, he was in that. What? He wasn't in The Wrong Man. Okay, now, so here's how I came up with the ones he wasn't in. I was going to make up titles myself, and I thought, well, won't that be fun? But Nursey sounded something like I would sure, make up anyway. Sure. So I went into Confessions of a Womanizer, and I clicked on that. And I saw that if you like that movie, you'll also like, and then there were other movies. <laughs> so then I clicked on that, but he was still in that movie. So then <laughs> I clicked on that movie and I got into a wormhole. It's tough to get a, it's to, you gotta go hard deep to, to get, find get a away movie from him. Wow. So I finally got into a wormhole with, with um, Behind Enemy Lines. So once I got into that, I went over, because that was Thomas Ian Griffith. There was a lead in that. So then I went to Hollow Point starring Donald Sutherland. Then I followed Donald Sutherland over into another spot where I found the wrong man with John Lithgow and a very hot Rosanna Arquette. Mm. Uh, mm. Yes. yes. So it took a lot of work Ooh, to yes. find a movie he wasn't in. Oh, good job, everybody. Excellent work. Excellent. That was tough. Mm-hmm. Hang on a second. Here oh, we yes? go. Uh, which of these movies did not star Nicolas Cage? Seeking Justice, Trespass, Stolen, Rage, Outcast, or The Wizard of Oz? Trick oh question. Oh my God! <laughs> I that's the that's the last decade there for Nicolas Cage. <gasps> believe it or not, I should have wow. used all those Bunch movies of stuff for you this. Never heard of. Oh my God! All right, anyway. and lastly, oh well, there's only two birthdays today. I got excited about my game, and let's finish off our week of birthdays by wishing a very happy birthday to Miss Amanda. Seyfried. Mm, yes. Yes. I made even sure that I said and it right. everybody just, uh, They says, always say wrong, but it's Seyfried. They even said that on IMDb. <laughs> Who turns 29 but can play anywhere from a daughter to a daughter. American Beauty? She has appeared as a daughter in American Beauty, okay. Les Miserables, The Big Love, Mamma Mia, and the upcoming 2015 movie called Fathers and Daughters, playing Russell Crowe's daughter. Daughter. Mm-hmm. No, I understand that every girl character in a movie is a daughter. Mm-hmm. But no, like, she is daughter yeah. character <laughs> in all of these movies. Linda Lovelace was somebody's daughter. I, that's what I... Oh, my God! I wrote that on this piece of paper and you just said my line. I did? I said, even Linda Lovelace had somebody was her father and mother. Somebody was disappointed. Somebody was disappointed by that. And and Lee, yes, you Karen. know how much I love when celebrities sing. You do. People ask me, tell me two interesting things about Karen. Yes. First... She really wants to see Reese Witherspoon naked. I did. Secondly, did it. I do. loves when celebrities sing. I do. And so this week I decided to listen to a little Amanda Seyfried singing from Mamma Mia, a mm-hmm. song that's kind of creepy because it's called Gimme, 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 A Man After Midnight. And she's singing about looking forward to finding her father. Ooh. Creepy Ooh. movie. Hi. <laughs> I did like the movie Mamma Mia, though. There's something fun and shiny about it. This music is fun and shiny. <laughs> so were Abba's pants. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps another movie showcast, everybody. Follow us on Twitter at The Movie Guys, Facebook.com slash The Movie Guys, as well as on YouTube, <laughs> iTunes, SoundCloud, Vine, Instagram, LinkedIn, singing. all that shit. Oh, there she is. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thanks to Natalie and Wayne. Yay! Natalie Lipka, Yay! Wayne Frazier, everybody. Easily found at natalieandwayne.com uh, or Hollywood Close Up on iTunes. What else you got out there? Is there a Twitter or something we should be following? At yeah. Natalie and Wayne. Right. Look at that. How original. There you go. Uh-huh. Hey, if it ain't broke. Keep her first. Yeah. I like it. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And thanks to Steve Schultz for his writing contributions to the show every week. And remember, you can always find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Next week, it's all over the map. We got a big blockbuster with Exodus, Gods and Kings. We got an indie like Inherent Vice. 
So join us in. We'll talk about it all. Thank you.